Okay, here we are still uh, creatively resisting in a bohemian way. We're still loaded with press, momentum is growing. Uh, we have a cabaret night, of course, not music again. It's going to be a chess tournament. Bring a chess table, anyone with a chess board is going to be let in. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so cabaret night tonight. Pack this place with lots of lots of people so they can't do anything anyway, but that's not the reason. Pack it because that's what it's for. It's going to be fucking rocking. It's going to be beautiful. And uh, of course, uh, no music, no music, nothing here. No, yeah, safe yeah, so yeah, yeah, so. Not, not music, it's chess. Oh yeah, chess. Sorry, <laughs> chess yeah, tournament. Yeah, yeah, bring, bring. Uh, We're having a community meeting from seven o'clock with uh, people with entertaining with themselves. With Remember, the kids, music is illegal now in Britain, so. Uh, <laughs> Don't let the authorities catch you playing music. Oh yes. The blue meanies will come, and they will shut down your grassroots yeah. venues, your squats. Yeah, and you can get the rest of British music culture and radiate it out around the world. Isn't it pity that many people have left these aisles to go and have a bit of freedom in other countries where they can play their sound systems and they can play their music? But you know, if you let them get away with it here in the centre of British popular music, you know, Denmark, yeah, Street, then the they'll be coming to your area next, yeah. and you'll have to ask written permission to play a guitar. Exactly. <laughs> I think singing might be. Or yeah, they don't care about people be. smoking weed, but uh, they care about playing game. people playing music. That's an illegal act. Yeah. Well, especially there's more than two or three of them. That's called a dangerous assembly. Yes. <laughs> Musicians are very subversive people. I remember those days. <laughs> Good old Soviet days. Good old Soviet <laughs> days. The <laughs> No fucking music, says Comrade Stalin. The Hungarian punk was weird because they got raided by the police all the time and it was fucking crazy. Tell us, tell us what? In Hungary... Yeah, yeah, when punk, of course it came from here, from Timpel Alley to Hungary anyway, because punk ah. started here. But uh, any punk band was raided by the police, so that's why they became big. It was rebellion. Big for illegal, illegal music. In the communist venues. days. Yeah. The communist yeah, in the 70s. Raided the, the punks, of course. They didn't want people who were going to, yeah. you know, uprise against the regime. Exactly. Now it's corporate control. They just don't, they just fuck you out of your venue. You have to turn it into a disco or you're just going to starve or yeah. they have to shut communist down. Communist control or corporate control? Yeah, yeah. Puppet masters. Yeah, all. Choose, choose your masters. <laughs> choose your oppressors. <laughs> choose your destiny as the Mortal Kombat. Yeah. I mean, you <laughs> know, so probably said it all already, but you know, the, uh, this place here is so world famous, you know, the, uh, the Rolling Stones played here, that David Bowie played here, yeah. they were born Jimi here, Hendrix basically. played here. They recorded their first album here in the alley, which is now Who asking did? for our protection. The Rolling Stones had their Rolling first Stones? album uh, in wow. Enterprise Studios, I think. In Enterprise yeah, Studios? They've okay. got it now. The workers yeah. are working really fast. We've been con concentrating on the campaign and it's running really fine. But now we have to physically do something, so I think we're going to test, uh, start a new hashtag. Yeah. Hashtag Occupy yeah, Team Panelli. Well, sure yeah. The new hashtag is Occupy Team Panelli, and you know what that means, people. This is going out on the Occupy channels. Get the old uh, pop-up dance up and, and Occupy Team Panelli. Yeah, well, what should happen is, you know, um, the developers will be able to sit down with all the local campaign groups yeah. and uh, all the ex-regulars of this bar and have a proper consultation where they listen to everyone's concerns and the guitar and actual owners. perimeter and yeah. the guitar shop owners and local businesses and everyone get together and have a reasonable cooperative common sense discussion and the whole perimeter of this 12 bar should be saved as a grassroots music venue the Glasses. people who used to run this place yeah. are really pissed off because they've had to move up to Holloway not on yeah. Denmark Street which is the centre of British music culture and you know and they're struggling up there in, in they're going to knock the back third of this off yeah. and there's going to be an 800 seat uh, venue I mean the developers said oh we're going to keep a music venue here but it's going to be an 800 seat venue that someone at the public meeting the other day said it's owned by some corporation that is owned by Tesco's <laughs> so you're going to have a Tesco venue in there that's going to cost you 39 quid to get in that really will help 15 <laughs> quid 27 for popcorn a burger and a pint or whatever it is and not to mention the music it's not going to be grassroots it's not going to be they should preserve the 12 bar as a grassroots venue with a big blue plaque there saying Jimi Hendrix Rolling Stones David Bowie Sex the Who, Pistols yeah, Sex whatever. Pistols the Beatles the blah 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 all these people came to this street and created British music culture that has gone round the world now like mate, you made a point in a video the other day people don't just come to this country to see you know come see the Queen they come to see this country because of Led Zeppelin because of the Rolling Stones because of you know all these famous music bands you know Libertines Adele, you know all these groups that have come out of they come out of squats 
yes. and they come out of <laughs> grassroots venues. Let's never forget that basically, you know, sporting culture has helped create a massive amount of, you know, music and bands in this country. Um, Eurythmics created Sweet Dreams only because they lived in a squat in Camden Square and could afford to buy a synthesizer that they then wrote and, and made Sweet Dreams on. By living in squats on a, you know, with less money, not having to work 67 hours a week to actually pay your rent and your mortgage, grip of death or whatever it is, people, have, artists, musicians, poets, rappers, performers, have time to practice their art, to practice their guitars and their music and to come together and meet other people. And, you know, the government recently criminalised... Um, uh, residential squatting, absolutely draconian law, even though 96% of the public consultation said don't criminalise it, including yeah. judges, lawyers, police federation, homeless charities, squatters, travellers and gypsy groups, lots of different NGOs. Lords said, even. Uh, yeah, said don't criminalise uh, residential squatting. It'd be an absolute disaster. And now what we're seeing is that, you know, this government's uh, housing policy has turned from a housing crisis into a housing car crash. Yeah. You know, many, many people are freezing the to death on now. the streets. Yeah. Mike Weverly and the other MP that brought this in are yeah. Mr. Mr. Fear, if you're murder. watching. It's murder. You know, people yeah. are dying on the streets, freezing to death on the streets. The other day, I saw an interview about this place. The manager of the Cockpit Theatre said they got a 22-year-old girl and brought her in because she was freezing outside on the streets. And they brought her into the Cockpit Theatre. They rung the homeless. Uh, you know, they all say to you, why don't you go through the normal homeless channels? And they said... We can't, they said, come and pick her up from the cockpit theatre. They said, we can't pick her up from the cockpit theatre, she has to be picked up on the street. We can't pick people up from an address. They have to be homeless, they have to be on the street. So they put her back out on the street with a duvet. Mm. The next day she was dead. She froze to death. Her name is Kinga. I think they've sort, uh, launched a campaign, some of the staff at the cockpit theatre, uh, wow. uh, say uh, the Kinga campaign. Sounds like we don't want any more of our sons, daughters, uncles, mothers, fathers, granddads, people who fought for their country to freeze to death on the streets. There's 1.5 million empty buildings out there in the UK. Uh, it came out of the love activist thing over them evicting us on Christmas Eve. The people were going we to do the Christmas dinner for the homeless. The, there's 1.5 million empty buildings in the UK. That's empty homes agency figures. That's 900,000 residential buildings and 600,000 uh, empty commercial buildings. And uh, the, the homeless figures is actually about 120,000 people. So that's 15 empty buildings for every homeless person. No one needs to be homeless. As the love activists are saying on their 26 city tour with the food kitchen, um, we have the tools. Yeah. We have the tools to provide everyone in this country with a home. Yeah. Why don't we just do it? Yeah, come what together in your community, organize, use your empty spaces. Yeah, yeah. do it yourself. Do it yourself, <laughs> DIY culture, that's what we call squatting for years. Yeah. Do it yourself. Connect culture. things and that's where it's empty, you guys it. go wrong. Use the space, house yourselves, you know, give us a hundred crowbars and you know, we'll create housing for everyone. We just you know, we don't wait around for the government, do it yourself. Which Get reminds me it. tomorrow is the march for home, so tomorrow watch out for it, it's yeah. gonna be big. Come, 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 network it tonight. If you're out there on your keyboard warriors around the computers, text it, tweet it, Facebook it. Uh, I think um, once one part of the march, the south one starts from Elephant and Castle, and then the east one starts from, is it around Shoreditch? There's a church in Shoreditch. All I know is that they come together around London Bridge. That's when I come together come around guess London moment, Bridge. And then it goes boom. And then it appears <coughs> at uh, Boris Johnson's Gaff City Hall. Uh, let's occupy They might City come Hall. here to party. Yeah. We're going to have a few nice Celebrate, police bring helicopters. Bring your mobile sound system, <laughs> bring your drums, bring your people, network Take the it. streets. Look it up on the internet. March for Homes, January 31st. There's another one in April as well. Let's make housing the biggest issue of this, you know, what's going on this year. And, you know, I think that... And that the killing of culture. Because I don't, want, culture, I don't yeah. want to live anywhere without culture. <laughs> that, that, that series of party that's just gotten in Greece, they said... Yeah. So the first things they're going to sort out is that... No one is, 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 is starving and hungry, and the second one that everyone's got housing. Before they yeah. do anything else, you sort of basically, you're supposed to be looking after people, you're a government, you should sort people out with food and shelter. Yeah. Basic human rights. <laughs> keep networking, keep squatting. Perfection. Come down to 12 bar, we got a. Uh, and don't forget, uh, hashtag. A few days lined up there. Oh, hello. Lively. Alright, <laughs> so um, repeal the law on squatting, repeal the LASPO Act that removed our rights to legal aid, and. Um, Make a list of all the 1.5 million empty buildings. Anything that's empty over a year should be opened up so that builders, electricians, plumbers and whoever can fix it up and then uh, you can house families, be health and safety checked and then families can go in. <laughs> all ages of people can have somewhere to live. Let's get on with the common sense policies for the future. Exactly, and all of you occupiers, get the old pop-up tents out and occupy Team Penali, yep. if you catch occupy. my date. Occupy you now easy stuff. <laughs> ciao, ciao. Then... Any, any, any wisdom? <laughs>
no, just come out tomorrow. Just be there, boots on the ground. It's needed. Oh, yeah. And, and then we can have a party a here. Practical solution. Oh, no party. Coming up to some of the coldest weeks, apparently, according to according to the Met, it's going to be some of the coldest weeks. This yeah, it's year. coming. They thought so, so that it's going to be some cold. Very quick and practical solutions are going yeah. to be found. And very, if you come this soon. way, if you come this way after the march, we can just shut down the Soho and have a big fucking street party. <laughs> Once you have enough people, you know, every little helps. <laughs> so that's cool. Says so. <laughs> It's seven, but they are, they are restreaming us sometimes for the global. Is that channel. going on Occupy London or has Yes, everything. Occupy News Network, Occupy London, and, and good, good, all the good. other channels. Hello, Phoenix. Which is good. Oh, me too. I don't want to give them any Edward spots. Okay, so uh, we'll be back a bit later. I'm going to have to reserve the battery. And ciao, ciao.